Uh, my name is Vera Scroggins, and I'm the director of Citizens for Clean Water in my county. And I've been doing documenting of this whole industry, the gas industry, since 2000 and 2008 or 2009. Well, it started because uh, a friend of mine told me that in Dimmick, they started drilling on a farm. And I said, drilling for what? And she took me to it. And it was a drill rig on a farm. And they're drilling for gas. So I had no idea that that was possible in this area. And then I learned that the, the industry has been getting leases for years before that. And now they finally decided to drill. And that was the beginning. And then I heard from this other, this friend also, that some people's water had changed in the area. So that was, I believe, 2009. So I went to see the different families and I saw the water and the struggle they were having with it. And I started to document. I did videos and photographs and then interviews. So I have a site on YouTube with my name. You know, I've just been telling everybody the, the downside of it, the impact to our environment, to our water. And then eventually the air got involved because they started building compressor stations to process the gas. And now we're up to 55 at least compressor stations just in this county and over 500 gas sites with wells on them. So anywhere from two to 10 or 12 wells and pipelines all over the place. So we're concerned about the air quality because there's emissions from the compressor stations and the gas wells. Then I was uh, giving tours. I gave a lot of, uh, so I call them citizen tours to show people like word of mouth, what, what's going on here. And then the industry was giving tours and I went to them, but it's different, you know, so that I said to the people, you can go to the industry, which is fine. And then you can have a citizen tour and see what the industry is not showing you. So there was a big interest in that. So I've done hundreds of tours for people, especially from New York, they were concerned. And I spoke at different places and giving testimony and the New Yorkers were especially concerned. They didn't want to have it come in to New York. Then they were able to actually stop it in New York. And then other states came in, and then other countries came in, and actually people from five continents came in to look at this and see, like, what the heck is going on here? And the industry, of course, is not admitting really to anything from what I can see. They've gotten loads of fines, loads of violations, and then recently, uh, Cabot, which is now called Cotera, they bought Cabot. They were in court and they they were given, after a grand jury investigation, they were given something like 15 charges, environmental charges. And I believe uh, like half of them were felonies. The other half were misdemeanors. And we went to court, I guess it's about a year now. Finally, they agreed to one misdemeanor. And so that to me was a complete disappointment. And then they, they were charged to build a special water treatment plant in Dimmick. And I can't think of the amount now, whether it's 14 million, 10 million, they have to put towards that plant and build it within something like four years. And to me, Dimmick is, is a problem because they've had so many instances of water issues. Where are you going to build water wells that you think can then be piped out and they would then pipe that out. Pennsylvania American Water would build the plant and then pipe out the water to areas endemic that needed it. And how are they going to get clean water? But that's what they claim, so we'll see what happens. And right now they're delivering water to a number of families. And it's some families need bulk water, which they're not delivering but they are delivering, at least to one family that I know, bulk water. Otherwise, it's bottled water. Well, the health impacts, especially is the water. So if your water is contaminated with all of the heavy metals, any chemicals, radiation, and then discoloration, possibly uh, methane, the gases coming up, you really can't drink it. You can't bathe in it. People have had problems bathing in it their skin reacting to it. They're also feeling like faint from it if there's gas coming up. So there's all different impacts. It depends on the water itself and how it's coming through. And 
besides that, all the traffic, the the emissions from the traffic. I mean, you, you saw some of the traffic coming in here. It's it's really heavy in the Montrose area, and you have all that diesel coming out. And besides pounding the roads, and we have to keep repairing the roads, the industry contributes to some degree for the roads, and then the local county or township contributes. So you have that issue. And then all the compressor stations, they're emitting, they have every single turbine that's in there is emitting gases of all kinds, and that's why we have a, a flare camera. One of our residents, Frank, has a flare camera, and you can see the gases coming out. And so there's no minimum setback to the compressor station. So it can be across the street from a home, like 500 feet away, and people are breathing this in. So these are all things that can take maybe years or months, depends on your sensitivity, for you to feel some kind of a reaction to it. Like right now, I'm feeling a reaction to the Canadian fires. And I can see the haze all over. And my allergies and my sensitivity is like uh, in my throat and I could feel like this sort of mucousy, allergic type of thing in my throat and my eyes feel funny. That plus whenever I went near the industry things, when there's emissions, any of their well sites and, and then compressor stations, I could smell something and there's like mercaptan at some of the stations, you could smell the mercaptan and that would affect me. Right here, I would feel something. And I'm only there, like, let's say within 15 minutes, I'm feeling something. So we have plants that are power plants besides, and also liquefied gas plants that are here, and they have all kinds of emissions. And you can smell it. I mean, I've complained a bunch of times about the odors. And so DEP comes in there and says, you know, well, let's find out where it is. If there's a leak, they fix it. And then it happens again, like a week later, a month later. It's a, it's a continual impact. Besides the impact to just cut up all of the ecosystems here. So you're putting hundreds of pipelines in. So you're cutting through the fields and through the, all the forested areas. That's doing something besides any kind of runoff with sediment and into our lakes and creeks. So it's all kinds of impacts. And and of course the industry is not thinking there's any problem to it. But then can, most of them don't live here. And the industry is not the main employer here. So they like to think or make people think there's some kind of a major or main employer, they're not. There may be number five or six as far as employers in our county the last time I looked. And we have, uh, we have a medical system here, we have a school system here, we have government here. So they're main employers besides construction and besides the stone industry and the lumber industry. So they're not anything major here, but their impact to the environment is major. The usual story is, you know, we'll know more 10 years from now. 14 years have gone by. Usually 20 years down the road, 10 years down the road, then you see what are the cancer rates like, what are the respiratory disease rate, what's the asthma rate like, and by then, what, what are you going to do about it? You know, they're raising food here, so what kind of an impact to the food, what kind of impact to the soil? So that remains to be seen and tested.